Okay. Okay, so here we are with a second case um, where we have set it up on the monitors as I described in the first case where we have the coronal haste IR, haste, true fist steady state images, and in phase uh, T1 flash images all in one plane on one monitor, then another plane on the second monitor, and the third plane on the third monitor. Again, all of them, the same sequences in the same slots. And on the monitor to the left, we have uh, B600 diffusion images for reference. Um, diffusion images have gotten a lot of play in the literature recently because they tend to be positive in the setting of appendicitis, and I find them nice corroboration. I grew up doing this with no diffusion, and so I'm more comfortable looking at these images, but it's nice to have these here for confirmation <coughs> of findings. So again, as I stated in the first review of the case that we did earlier, I double click on the coronal haste and review it first, and I look specifically for fluid collections surrounding the cecum. So here's the uh, hepatic flexure here, and I'm gonna come follow it down, and, and I'm gonna look for, there it is, some bright signal surrounding the cecal tip. Here's the cecum, and here's bright signal. You'll notice that that bright signal is asymmetric to the contralateral abdomen. It's also asymmetric to all four quadrants, so this is very positive already for appendicitis, just finding the bright fluid here. Again, this image is not good for finding the appendix itself. It's only good for finding the inflammation that's related to the appendicitis. And so then I go immediately to the coronal haste where the fat suppression and inversion recovery sequence has been turned off. It's a single shot T2 and allows me to see the anatomy better. And you're looking for a tubular structure that has a dark ring followed by a bright ring. Here is a tubular structure right here. I'll zoom up on it so that we can see it. That is bright in the center, lumen, very dark in the wall and has bright surrounding it, which corresponds to an appendix. You can see that it's tubular. You can follow it over several sequences and it goes wide up and touches the sequel tip. So that's the appendix. And the inflammatory response is present surrounding it. This very dark on the T2 weighted images in the wall is typically hemorrhage. And so it correlates very nicely with the bright fluid that we saw on the fat suppressed image. So this is already looking very positive for appendicitis. We can then come back and review the other images just in case there's additional information. Again, so here's the appendix on this one. Now, now that we have a, an, a positive appendix there, I'm gonna to try to find it by correlating on an image that I know I see it well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom this one up. And so I know there it is. Again, I'm gonna zoom way up on it so I can show it to you easily. Here it is. And now I'm gonna scroll with the co-localizer plane displayed until I can find it on the other image plane. So I'm gonna look here in the same place and I see inflammation right here outside of the uterus that's asymmetric to the contralateral fat, so this is where the inflammatory process is occurring. And I'm gonna come again over here and look for the appendix, and here it is, lo and behold. There's a bright lumen with dark walls and surrounding edema. So there's the appendix. That's just mildly inflamed. It's not, it's definitely positive, but it's not you know, grossly positive, not grossly inflamed. So there it is, we see it. Now, if we can correlate that with bright signal on the diffusion. So I'm here now, you can see my diffusion images are, are locked in the axial plane, and I'm looking for a bright dot. At this point, it's a dot. So I wanna see a bright dot, there it is. Bright dot, that's positive on diffusion. And it correlates well with position and anatomy on the T2s and the coronal T2 image plane as well. So this is a case that is grossly positive for appendicitis. It is, again, an uncomplicated mild appendicitis from this appearance. I'm gonna then go back and make sure that there isn't anything in the background that I'm missing. So I'm gonna, again, look for pyelonephritis, something very common in pregnant patients. You can see that this patient has mild hydronephrosis related to the gestational mass effect of the uterus. That's very normal as long as it's um, not associated with parenchymal signal distortion, high signal on the sequence in the parenchyma, it's okay. It's not significant. Then I'm gonna look around and make sure that the bile ducts are not dilated, there's no cholelithiasis. I'm gonna make sure that the gallbladder isn't inflamed, that there isn't any ascites or obstruction. And then I'm gonna take a moment to run through on the axial images to make sure that there isn't any intrapelvic process that would also be a problem. 
Again, a normal corpus luteum cyst on, on the right ovary. So again, it's looking as though it's positive. It's positive in the right place. It's a good scenario, and everything looks uh, reportable as a mild, uh, uncomplicated acute appendicitis. That's it.